we look at the past, I would hope we can get inspired by looking at the craftsmanship and looking at the details and long to build better because we see beautiful things like this. Italianate, that's the kind of the, 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 the other, the, the main styles in this period are Italianate and Gothic Revival. Okay, if, if, if you look at the pattern books and what they're writing about and Greek Revival. Now, um, you know, we talked about in the Greek Revival talk, uh, Benjamin Latrobe. Benjamin Latrobe, he did Gothic Revival things. He did Italianate things. He did Greek Revival things. And so all these guys are, are, are speaking that same language and doing that stuff. I'm highlighting these particular styles, but realize that J Davis did styles like this. As he's most well known for the Gothic, but he also did Italianate stuff. Now this is, you know, they're looking to Europe. They're looking to Tuscany with the tall towers and, you know, th this kind of styling. You, you see a lot of arch windows here. The bracket detail is, is the clear giveaway. When I walk up to a house, I'm kind of wondering what style Victorian it is. If it's got brackets under there, it's almost mm -hmm. always Italianate. So Italianate was a very popular style. It could be done on a very high style scale, and it could be done very simple and clean. Um, but you know, th this is kind of uh, a, a very high style Tuscan style. But the bracketing under here is is one of those details that's that's really important and really part of that tradition. Um, and you'll see a lot of arch windows and arch details in, in this style. Um, this is an Italianate house. This is one's a little bit confusing because you've actually got a tower with the Second Empire roof on it. So the Second Empire, as we'll see, has, these, has this mansard roof detail up here, but the bracketing under here is kind of really defining it in the Italianate style. Um, and that one. This one's Italianate, right? You see the arch windows, you see the tower bracketing underneath there. This one looks like it's from Italy, right? It's not, it's the Milo house. Um, but again, you, the tower bracketing under the eaves, all part of that. It looks like a Tuscan villa. It's kind of what they're trying to, to go after and what they're looking for. And this one is another one that's a little bit hard to, it doesn't stick out to me as a, as a clear Italianate style house, but the bracketing here and here, uh, certainly under this thing, they've just got other frivolous, like this is kind of a Greek detail. And so uh, that cresting on the roof. And so, uh, they can be a little bit confusing, just so you know. And then Second Empire, I was in school when we were learning these different styles, it was always tell the Second Empire because of this mansard roof. And so you'll see some of the things like, well, you go, is that Italianate? No, because we got the mansard roof um, going on there. Um, mansards can be a number of different styles, right? Those you'll see a convex mansard here, you see a concave mansard, sometimes it's straight. Um, there's some S curves that you'll see, and so a um, lot of different things, but basically, I mean, you still have towers in this style. The towers and the turret are really a part of the Victorian era all the way through. You think of the Queen Anne's with their turrets and things like that, it's very popular to that style. And we'll talk about this when we talk about balloon framing, but it's balloon framing that allows them to build houses like this, right? Because before they were all timber frames and you really couldn't affordably timber frame this house out. It has to be done with, you know, stick framing and balloon framing. So um, we'll come back to that when we talk about the building side of it, but that's kind of all part of, of what this looks like. The difference between balloon framing and timber framing, the timbers were like four by four or six by sixes? Or Eight by eights. Yeah, and I'll show you some examples. The balloon framing was two four. Mostly, yeah. yeah. Alice, do you have a question? Yeah, his question, so people online know what he said. Yeah, his question was, what's the difference between timber framing and balloon framing? It's the size of the timbers, and he was asking what size they were. And I was saying, we're going to go through that here in a second. I'm going to actually show you some timber frames and what, what, that, was, what that was doing. Again, Second Empire. Um, there you see kind of a, a different little mansard roof up there, but that's a very pretty man, uh, Second Empire house. And it's going to get confused. I don't know if your eyes, like, they're starting to all look the same. Um, you'll even be more confused next time. Um, Terrace Hill, very famous Second Empire house. Again, you see this tall tower, but certainly this, this mansard roof as it runs around here. 
uh, defines it really in that style. 1869, right at the edge of our time period. So Gothic Revival and, and Italianate. Italianate lasts pretty much through the period. Um, uh, Second Empire doesn't start as early as the Gothic or the Italianate, but it lasts a little bit longer. Um, and then this is the uh, a house in Newport. And, you know, talk about crazy interiors and, and details that are, I mean, this is Newport, so this is very, very expensive uh, Second Empire house.